Hey guys, so in this lesson I'm going to go through momentum and impulse together with a couple of examples just to make sure that you're really confident with it uh, before we go into your exam. So, oops, that's not the button I wanted to press. So, first of all we're going to get the idea of what impulse is. Um, really impulse is just uh, something that's mathematical and we use it to get the idea of what is the force needed to change some momentum. Um, so let's imagine that I have a ball and it's got mass m and it's moving with velocity v. Okay. And usually with impulse we deal with collisions. So let's assume that this ball collides into a wall like that and so it's, let's, let's change it actually from, let's say its initial velocity was u, its final velocity is v, and it goes to zero. And it's still got mass m. And what we want to know is what is the force on the wall that the ball applies when it hits it? Um, so that's a pretty common question. That's kind of the context that we normally get this about. So one of the things we can do is we can think about uh, forces and uh, momentums. So, one of the things we know is from Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration. What we also learned earlier in the course is, well, that acceleration is equal to v minus u over t. Now, what we can do with that is we can say, well, let's expand this equation. Let's substitute our equation, our uh, acceleration equation into the force equation. So that gives me force is equal to mass multiplied by v minus u over t. Now, uh, I know some of you uh, are fantastic at maths and find it really easy. Personally, I actually really struggled with maths uh, for a long time. So one of the things you need to know is that if I am doing a times b times c over d, what that becomes is ab times ac all over d together. A lot of the times you might be tempted um, to put an a down here as well, but that would be wrong. You can't do that. So that what this becomes is mv minus mu over t. Now, why is that important? Well, if you look at this equation a little closely, you can see that mv is a momentum. Uh, it's a momentum uh, at the end. And mu is the momentum at the start. So what I can say is that force is equal to change in momentum divided by time taken. Now you can go ahead and just remember that as an equation if you want, or sometimes what we do is we rewrite it and we say, okay, so now I'm going to say that if I take this equation here, so I've got to the point where I've said f is equal to mv minus mu over t, well what will happen if I multiply both sides by t? Then I would get ft is equal to mv minus mu. And what we often do in physics is we give a new term to this. So I call f times t I call it impulse. So therefore, I can say impulse is equal to change in momentum. So this is the key equation that you need. Force times time is equal to the change in momentum on something. One last thing you need to know. Um, you will often be asked for the units of this. So force times time, that is a force which is measured in newtons. 
and it's multiplied by time, which is measured in seconds. So we always give it with the unit Newton seconds. So an impulse is just a force multiplied by a time uh, with the units Newton seconds. So let's think about some uses of that. So I've got a bowling ball, mass 20 kilos, and it goes from a speed of 5 meters per second to 0 meters per second, hitting you in the face. So we want to calculate the impulse. To calculate that, we need to know the momentum before and after. So I can say momentum before is equal to its mass times initial velocity. So this is something that I'd recommend you do actually as you when you're answering any question. Um, I'm just going to label things on my work as I go. So I know that my 20 kilo is the mass. My 5 meters per second, that's the initial velocity. Um, and my 0 meters per second is my final velocity, V. So mu, I've got, there's my m, there's my u. So I can say momentum before is, excuse me, momentum before is 20 times 5. So that is, I should be able to do this quicker than that, 100 newt, uh, sorry, uh, 100 kilogram meters per second. My momentum after is mv, so that's 20 times 0. 20 times 0 is 0 kilogram meters per second. <coughs> now impulse, we know, is change in momentum. So quite simply, it will be mv minus mu, so it'll be 0, take away 100, so it'll be minus 100. And I could uh, give it in kilogram meters per second squared, but remember what I said earlier, we generally give it with the units newton seconds. Okay, so why is this important? Why do we bother using this? So we can use impulses to find forces. We know that force times time is equal to the impulse. So in the previous example, you catch the ball, which remember has an impulse, which I'll write as just Ft, of 100 Newton seconds. So you catch it in your hands. So it takes two seconds. Two seconds is T. What's the force needed? So what I'm going to say here is I know that Ft is impulse. So substituting it in, I can say F times 2 is equal to 100. Impulse was 100. T was 2 seconds. Rearranging the equation, I get F is 100 over 2, which is 50 newtons. And that's equivalent to holding uh, 5 kilos in your hand. So uncomfortable, but not a problem. What about if you catch it with your face? So it hits you in the face, and it stops completely in 0 0.1 seconds. Because when you catch it with your hands, you can slow it down over a long period of time. If it catches you in the face, it stops instantly. So what's the force then? Well, exactly the same equation. Now, t is 0 0.1. Impulse is the same because the change in momentum is the same. It's still gone from 5 meters per second to 0 meters per second and weighs the same. So its change in momentum hasn't changed. But the, uh, the, but the impulse, so the, sorry, so the impulse is the same, but the force is going to be different. So now I can say uh, F times 0 0.1 is equal to 100. So F will be 100 divided by 0 0.1, and if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get a 1,000 newtons. Now that's equivalent to having a 100 kilo object just hanging on your head, which would be quite unpleasant. So you can imagine that if I've got a bowling ball coming towards me, and it hits me like that, that's like somebody putting a 100 kilos of weight straight on my face. So that's why, well, let's think about this then. Um, when you jump off a desk, 
why do you bend your knees? Well, let's think about it. When you're sitting on top of the desk, oh, sorry, just, just before you hit, so you jump off like that. I'm going to draw you just as a ball because it's easier. You'll have mass and velocity. So as soon as you fall off the desk, before you hit the ground, you've got a set amount of momentum. So the impulse is always going to be the same. The change in momentum is always going to be the same. But if you bend your knees, you crumple. You, you slow down over a longer period of time. So the force on you is reduced. And we see that a lot. Um, one of the things that you might see after a car crash is the cars look really messed up. And the reason that the cars look really messed up is cars are designed so that the front of the car crumples and crushes in a crash. And the reason for that is it takes longer to crash that way, only by a fraction of a second, but it's quite a, a big difference in the amount of force. Because if we can make something take a longer time to change its momentum, the force will always be less. So what I would like you to do now for me is go and try some Isaac physics questions. Uh, so what I've asked you to do um, is I've set you uh, this task. And uh, this, the one, the, one of the tasks I'll just use as an example here just to give you an idea of how we can use impulse gives you the table in front of you and asks you to work it out. So um, they've already labeled some things for you. So this is, excuse me, this is M. And they've given you velocity before and after. So you could have relabeled this V and U, but they haven't done that. They've also given you P. Now, P is used in physics for momentum. But CIE don't use it. Generally, in physics, you do use P, um, but CIE don't, so I haven't bothered saying that. But if you see P, they mean momentum. And then they've given you force and time. So one of the things you could do is add in, in your notes, an impulse column. Um, because if you add an impulse column, you'll find that calculating these things become a lot simpler. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that, do the first line. So we're going to have a go at this line here. So I would expect all of you uh, to get full marks on that one. So. I've got a force and a time here together. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out a uh, impulse because that's nice and easy and it's right there. So I can say for this one, uh, impulse is FT. So that will be 4.2 times 12. Plug it into a calculator. That is... 50.4 Newton seconds. Um, now, can I work out the change in momentum? Well, yes I can, um, because impulse is change in momentum, so C should be 50.4. Can I work out the momentum after? Uh, no, I can't, um, because... I don't have the uh, momentum before. Can I work out the velocity after? No. Oh, I can. Sorry, no, I can work this out, can't I? Because I've got uh, M and V. So what I can say is momentum uh, before. Yeah, here we go. So I can say momentum before will be the mass times the velocity before. So I'm going to say B, V before. Uh, so that will be 2.5 times 0. So that will be 0. So uh, momentum before is 0. Ah, here we go. So now I can say, well, if I've got before momentum was 0, after the momentum was 50.4, sorry, the change was 50.4, Therefore, 0 plus my change of 50.4 gives me uh, an after momentum of 50.4. So this will be 50.4. Now can I work out A? So to work out A, I can say uh, momentum is mass times velocity. I now know that the momentum afterwards was 50.4. I know that my mass is 2.5. 
and so I'm trying to find velocity. So again, rearrange the equation. My velocity is 50.4 divided by 2.5. Uh, plug that into a calculator. That comes out as 20. And if I'm going to give it to the correct number of significant figures, all of these are to uh, two significant figures. So this needs to be to two significant figures as well. So that'll be 20 meters per second. Um, if you try and answer this in the question again, you'll probably find that 50.4 won't work uh, because. Uh, yeah, it won't work uh, because it's to the wrong number of significant figures and Isaac Physics really cares about that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's just an example of how to do this. Um, you cannot do these questions just by trying to work them out and plug in numbers. You have to have a bit of scrap paper with you um, or a me whiteboard and do it like that. Okay, so now I'd like you to go and have a go at uh, completing those questions for me. Uh, one more question I'd like you to just go through is uh, conserving momentum. Uh, because this is a uh, another kind of classic question where you might be asked to have a look at it. So you've got two trolleys that are moving in opposite directions. So the first thing I'm going to do, because they're moving in opposite directions, momentum's a vector. I'm going to say that to the right is positive. Uh, and I'm asked for the total momentum of the trolleys before the collision. So I'm going to label this one and trolley two. So for trolley one, the momentum is mass times velocity so that is 30 centimeters per second and again like I say I do this directly on the paper we'd never work in centimeters so I'm going to rewrite that as 0 0.3 meters per second I'm going to rewrite this as 0 0.2 meters per second so for trolley number one uh, that will be 0 0.3 multiplied by 2.0 which comes out as it's shameful I need a calculator for that but you know what I don't trust my mental maths it's not very good um, and there's nothing wrong with checking things in a calculator uh, yep okay that's good maths does still work uh, 0 0.6 kilogram meters per second for number two uh, that's now I'm just going in the opposite direction, so I need a minus sign in front of it. So the momentum is uh, 3.0, which is its mass, times negative 0 0.2 meters per second. Yeah, because it's going in the opposite direction. Um, so that comes to uh, also, so it comes to negative 0 0.60 kilogram meters per second so the total will be 0 0.6 plus negative 0 0.6 so it will be 0 kilogram meters per second oops kilogram meters per second so the total momentum is 0 so what's the total momentum after the collision? Well, that will also be zero, because remember, in all things, momentum is always conserved. So they might ask, what is the velocity after? Well, I know that the uh, total, that if they stick together, um, then I can say that momentum is uh, m1 plus m2, because they've stuck together, times their new velocity. So momentum of 0 will equal to 2 plus 3 times the new velocity so the new velocity will equal 0 as well. There's another example of how you can solve some of these problems.